Good morning. morning. Welcome to McDowell United Methodist Church. And before I forget, I would like to extend a special greeting to all the mothers, all the uh, ladies gathered here for worship service. In one way or the other, we know the aspect of motherhood. So may God continue to bless each and every one of you. Our announcements, uh, I think, Jeannie, you had yes. something to share. Yeah. Thank you. And then it uh, seems like we are going to have an outdoor service on June 11th. Uh, so please keep that in mind also. Uh, volunteers for the next week are listed here. Uh, any other announcements we have? If not, then let's come together and begin our worship service and we will read responsive, oh, sorry, I forgot to mention the birthdays and anniversaries. Uh, we have uh, May 14th, Catherine Frisbee has her birthday, and in second, uh, two years old. Uh, may God just shower her, his blessings on her. And on May 17th, Leroy Barnes celebrate his birthday. We don't have any anniversaries listed here, so. Uh, now, coming back to the call to worship. Uh, let's read this responsibly, and if you're able to stand. Okay. Someone asked me to put this on our bulletin board. On June 10th, out at Fugit Woods, there's wings and crawly things, uh, visual presentation, bug ID for the kids and parents. Um, I'll put it on the bulletin board. Okay. <coughs> okay, thank you. Third time back to call to worship. We come with gladness, remembering the mothers mentioned in the Bible, our own mothers and those who are mothers, to acknowledge this presence in each family. This strength of love and patience speaks to us that God meant for us to be blessed in a special way in this life. Like Eve, the first mother, there are many with grief and broken hearts. Then there are those like him who give away their child for the service of God. Some like Elizabeth experience unexpected blessings and rejoice in the Lord. Then there are those like Mary who know their child is destined for something big. With that thought, let's open our worship service by singing hymn number 674.
Prayer of confession, shall we read this together, please? The strength of each family is yoked between the father and the mother. Their faith in Christ is the foundation of blessing for each child. Today we pray for all the women in our lives, so God's grace flows in each of us, because they are called to be the reflection of God's sacrifice. Words of assurance for our guidance for the coming week. God always has the structure of a family in his mind. Jesus was born in a humble family so as to learn what it means to have a sense of belonging. Mary stayed with him until his last breath. God is still healing the broken hearts of many mothers. We live with this assurance. Amen. You may be seated, please. And our hymn of preparation is number 445. <laughs> Okay, at this time we have some new talent amidst us, yeah? Sharing of talent. Olivia and Brooklyn. That was a growing talent. Praise the Lord. We have new singers in our church. That's the way you teach them. Okay, come on kids, let's have a time of fellowship.
And when we come together for our time of prayer, uh, any joys or concerns that you have? Yeah, Jill? Okay, so keep these, them in your prayers, please. I have a brother-in-law, Mike Bill, and his cancer is spreading. Okay. And I saw another hand go up. Yes, Marianne. Uh, this one's from my name for Randy. Okay. Let's, yes, Matt. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. So continue to pray. Okay, let's come together for our time of prayer then. Dear gracious Father, in the words of Christ, you have given us a time of growth. He is the wine and we are the branches. You have grafted us in your son through our faith in the miracle of his death and resurrection. You have given us all the spiritual feed that we need to grow up to be fruitful wherever we are. This morning, especially as we gather here with words of praise as Matt has shared with us the healing that you have extended to his friend. Not only him, but there are so many amidst us who have felt, experienced firsthand what that healing is. And so we offer you praise and thanksgiving as we gather here together on this special Sunday of recognition of our mothers. In them, you have given us a model of love and sacrifice and discipline, and trust, and patience. We ask that you surround each of them with your loving grace. And as growing children, we realize that we also cling to you, O oh God, in whom all these characteristics exist. You are our mother. You are our father. You are our caregiver. We thank you for all that you have done in your son, Jesus. And so, Lord, bless our gathering today and be with our church as we extend our ministry to so many different people, especially this morning, the Vacation Bible School, as it continues to extend the story of Christ to the children in so many different ways. They begin to feel that there is somebody special who hears them, who is with them, strengthen their faith. Thank you for all the teachers and the volunteers that are being of one mind and one faith, rearing and teaching these children what it means to be Christians. Heavenly God, we live in this world that is really going bad to worst each day. So many situations that we cannot handle. We don't have answers for them. But we pray. Pray for our leaders that you will give them wisdom. Even if the leadership changes, still the greed that is there. Help us to open our hearts and minds to your wisdom so that we can feel the benefit that human beings need. And loving God as called people of love, call people of sacrifice. We are here to confess that we have many times failed in our calling. So renew the right spirit in us today. 
and help us to walk the walk of faith. I pray for those who are celebrating their birthdays this week. May your blessings abide with them. And I lift the prayers of all these uh, loved ones that have brought their prayer requests for the surgery and healing and strength. Loving God, continue to touch them. Empower us so wherever we are, may our faith shine through in our words and actions. Once again, Lord, we humble ourselves in front of you for the coming week so that your presence will always be with us. Heavenly God, hear our prayer. Because we ask this prayer in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now we present our tithes and offerings to the Lord as a continuation of our worship service. We need help from our ashes, please. Dear Lord, you send all the blessings in our way to uphold and sustain us in this life. Let our offerings be added on to your praise of thanksgiving. Let this serve its purpose of touching and changing lives. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. You may be seated, please. Today's reading is John 14, 15 through 21. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you desolate, I will come to you, yet a little while, and the world will see me no more. But you will see me, because I live, you will live also. In that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. He who has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me, and he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. May God add his, the reading of his word. On this Mother's Day Sunday, I'm not going to reflect, as you have seen from the reflection, uh, specifically anything about the women or the mothers, but we need to remember on Mother's Day that her love that binds us in one unit as a family, uh, 
testifies not only for that one particular present unit, but it reflects on the generations that have gone back and generations that will uh, continue. But main aspect of the whole family unit is the love, love of the mother, which is uh, most of the time non-conditional. If it is not taken in respect of disciplining children, but even in spite of that, it still is unconditional love. And then on this day, as we reflect on that aspect of unconditional love of uh, mothers, women, we also read the words from John's Gospel. The question, or maybe a suggestion, that Jesus places in front of his disciples. If you love me, if you love me. The word if is the connecting point between Jesus and his disciples. And you know that we have used this word if, we do use that word if, uh, in our daily life for many different situations. Um, as parents, you always tell children, if you do your homework, I'll let you watch TV. Now we have to change our language. If you do your homework first, I'll let you use your cell phone. So from TV, we have moved to the cell phone use, right? If you do this, then I will do this. I will let you have that freedom. I think when Christ was talking to his disciples, he was trying to change the whole perspective of relationship. These were the Jewish men who were raised with Ten Commandments. And these Ten Commandments were lots of do's and don'ts. And God made sure to start out this community with a spiritual discipline of these laws which are still uh, observed and very much uh, kept as they have been written down for generations. And Christ wanted his disciples to understand that the law is the law. It condemns you, but there is no free will in it. And that's why he uses the word if. He doesn't go back to the Ten Commandments, do this or this will happen, do this or this will happen, no. He begins that whole perspective of new relationship with God with the word, if you love me. And so when we come to the New Testament, we don't hear more about the condemnation as it was in the Old Testament. But in Jesus' teaching, there is more free will. You choose. You decide. It is your call. What you want to do. How you want to live your life. And this is what I am recommending to you. If you love me. And then the whole scripture lays down what they are called to do. Homiletically speaking, John 14 is a part of a discourse that began somewhere in chapter 10, a little before chapter 10, half of chapter 9, and it continues till later in the chapters, 16, 17 also. Because this is the main discourse in which John is trying to convince us who will read his scripture later on trying to convince us that Christ is Christ. He is the Word. He is the Son of God. It was very important for John to be, uh, for us to be able to relate to Jesus in entirely different way, outside the box of Old Testament uh, rules, do's and don'ts. And that's why in this discourse, Christ begins by saying, if you love me. And I think verses before that that go on uh, from 1 to 14, 
they relate to the peace aspect of him. He gives, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am, you have my peace. Uh, I don't give you the peace like the world gives. He promises them all that in first 14 verses. And then he begins the verse 15 with, if you love me. The question is that in these uh, few words, in this one sentence, not only there is a choice, not only there is a free will, not there is a power of reasoning on my part, what is good for me, what is bad for me, if I do this, what will happen, if I do this, what will happen, but at the same time, there is a solution and there is an encouragement. And in the next few verses, that's what Christ is making sure that disciples understand that this is his last time when he will be taken away, physically taken away from them. And he has a solution for them. They don't have to be sad, they don't have to be lonely, they don't have to uh, be worried about how our lives are going to pan out. But he says, if you love me, and then he gives the solution. He will send an advocate, a person in presence who will speak on their behalf, who will uh, help them to mend their ways, who will teach them what is right, what is wrong. A promise is made. And if you read, this was something uh, different for me this time when I read the gospel. It said, I will send you another advocate which means that now we have two advocates, right? Christ is speaking for himself. He is already an advocate, physically present with the disciples, but now he's going to go away in physical sense. So he says, I will send another advocate, which means that God's presence now is going to be with us in the third form. The Trinity aspect is coming back. For our revelation, God the Father sent his son, Jesus, who was the advocate at that time, while he ministered amidst us. And then he sent another advocate, which means that God has solution for our lives. We don't have to be uh, living this life alone by ourselves. Verse 17, it says, whoever abides in me. And by abiding, it means uh, having a deeper relationship with God. And this deeper relationship is a simple example of grafting when you uh, take one sapling and then trim it and ma make it set in a slot in another healthy plant. And as the grafting takes up the nutrition from the main plant, it grows and bears a good fruit. Uh, again, going back to uh, John 15, I'm the wine and you are the branches. The theme continues. And this is how the advocate is going to help us. We will be grafted in the body of Christ. All we have to do is we have to abide in him. We have to stay put. We have to give that time to be bound together with the cells that are in the main wine. That is the Jesus himself. I will send you the advocate, he will help you, and you have to be able to stay put, abide in me. And Christ gave the disciples commandment, stay here till the Holy Spirit comes upon you, till you receive that counselor, and then the day of Pentecost happens. So there is an important message, not only that Christ is saying, if you love me, abide in me, stay with me. But at the same time, the gift of the Holy Spirit is coming in your way. There is an advocate, there is a person, my own person, that I will send to you. And it is this person that will make you grow. This person will make you bear fruit. This person will make you appealing to my Heavenly Father. Just as I lived in the uh, discipline of my father, this advocate, this counselor 
will allow you and help you to learn how to live within that discipline. So the question is what about us? I mean, we who are called to be God's people, we are, who are post-Easter people, we who celebrate the resurrection of Christ, the powerful, most powerful miracle that took place. It set all the miracles aside and made it so special that God's power over death, giving us life, and this is the life that bears fruits. Each of you are called to be part of this community. Each of you are called part, uh, to be of this growth, this fruit-bearing aspect. But all you have to do is, if you love me, abide in me. And then I will send you this counselor, this advocate, and your life will flourish. You will do all things that I have done. Just see that Christ stretches our boundaries, our imagination. You are not only going to be a blessing to yourself, but you will do all these things that I have done, which means that um, Christ healed people. He cast out evil spirits. He even turned water into wine, make, make the aspect of uh, celebration more joyous. He cleansed the lepers. He gave eyes to the blind. He made this person of 38 years who was incapable of standing up even uh, walk. What are you talking about, Jesus? You will do all these things that you have seen me do. When? The advocate will come. When the Holy Spirit will come. When this person, my presence, the counselor, will be with you. Christ is trying to tell us, folks, our potential. Sometimes we think, oh, I'm just human being. I'm struggling, struggling with all the uh, human uh, situations, and I may not be a good believer, and this is not happening for me, and that is not happening for me. But just Take a minute and look at what your prayers are accomplishing. Take a minute and see what your hard work, work of faith is uh, growing. What kind of fruits it is bearing. It will tell you a moment of awakening that when you are grafted in Christ through your faith, each day, each day is a blessing. And he says, obey my commandments. If you love me, obey my commandments. And what were the commandments that Christ gave? Love God with all your heart. Believe me, it is very difficult to love God with all your heart. Because we have to have time for ourselves, right? We are human beings. That temptation is always there. How can I love God with all my heart and still have to struggle in life? In spite of all that, don't you think that Christ struggled for the three and a half years that he uh, was ministering people, healing people, teaching them how to love each other and here is this whole religious sect and uh, Pharisees and Sadducees and people blaming him this way or that. Even Samaritans didn't want Jesus to go through their towns. He, uh, they had heard how much healing he is doing and still they said, no, we will not allow you to pass through. Did he give up on his father? Love God with all your heart, no matter what my conditions are, what my situations are. And then love your neighbor as yourself. Now that's much more difficult than loving God. Believe me. You have not encountered sometimes neighbors that we have, uh, or maybe you have. Loving your neighbor as yourself. Very tough to do. 
But when you believe in Christ, every little word of kindness, every little gesture of love that you show to these neighbors, they understand that you are different. If you love me, abide with me and obey my commandments. Those are the things we need to keep in mind that that is the basic foundation of every living being. So folks, it's go time and grow time for us. Go time because Christ has accomplished his work. We are post Easter people and now it is the grow time. How many of you have already put your plants in the ground? Tomatoes and peppers and flowers and look at all the farmers. Did you put all your corn and beans in the ground? It's grow time, right? Why do we do all these things? There is a hope. There is a trust. This seed is going to grow up. It will bear fruit. Don't you think that God delights in you when that seed of faith is sown in you? When that love of God is deep down in yourself, in your heart, begins to sprout. As I drive, especially these last two weeks after the rain, uh, suddenly I see the green rose in the fields. And what a joy it is. If it is for me, how much more joyous it is for the farmers, you know? They have put all the hard work. Just imagine how much God delights in us. If you love me, abide in me. Obey my commandments. And his commandments are love God and love your neighbor. <coughs> like I said, it is go time and grow time. May God bless all your efforts each and every day as you follow his commandments and obey his commandments. Let's conclude our worship service by singing um, hymn number 474, Precious Lord, Take My Hand. May the Lord always continue to shine his face upon us. We step into the world with this radiance to show the path of salvation. The good news is in our hands to share with others. The Lord guides us. Praise the Lord.
You're welcome.